So for the last number of years here at the store, the Boutique Guitar Showcase has stopped by, and they've always got some incredible guitars, really incredible stuff. And it got me thinking as to just exactly what is the Boutique Guitar Showcase? Uh, where did they get their guitars? What's the process for getting them? Um, so I was lucky enough to sit down with Jamie Gale from the Boutique Guitar Showcase and ask him some of those questions. Just what exactly is the Boutique Guitar Showcase? Yeah, the Boutique Guitar Showcase uh, features instruments that I consider to be unique world-class instruments that contribute to the conversation of the guitar. Mm. So that may sound a little heady. Right. Uh, what, what it simply means is that there are a lot of great guitars being made in the world. Mm. Uh, and I'm looking for people who have something to say that isn't currently being said by someone else, or they say it in a way that maybe is a little more interesting than the way someone else is saying it, you know? Such as? Uh, yeah. Such as this guitar, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Where did the inspiration for the Boutique Guitar Showcase come about? Sure, so the NAMM show, which yeah. uh, the biggest yeah. musical instrument show in the world, yeah. um, brought me in as a consultant back in 2016 to help them find uh, the best way to work with these artisanal guitar makers. Mm. They're, they're not corporate thinkers. These are these are artisans working by themselves in their workshop typically, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know how to promote themselves and how to work in an industry is not first nature for them. Yeah. And so I, I created a space within the NAMM show that met their needs a little better than, than what was existing there. And yeah. uh, from there, retailers came into the space and said, Jamie, this feels amazing, it's exciting. Mm. We don't get this excited very often because we kind of seen it all. Yeah. Can yeah. you get the feeling in our store? Yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. where the tour came from. So no, we no. started bringing it to the stores because of what was happening at NAMM. Yeah. And uh, any particular favorite part of the tour? You know, I think at heart, I'm a, I'm a connector. I, I like teaching. I yeah. like, I like showing people new experiences, you yeah. know, and um, opening eyes. You know, yeah. people who think they've seen it all, and then yeah. they see something that inspires them, and they yeah. weren't expecting it. Yeah. You know, and it's not uncommon. I think you even had a moment earlier on where you picked up one of these guitars and you went, and you were shocked. You literally yeah. exclaimed out loud, like, "Whoa!" <laughs> yeah. I think it was it was that one right there. Yeah. 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 And that's really gratifying for me. Oh, and then yeah. to watch a customer come to the event and play guitar and fall in love with it. And you know, finding something they love is gratifying, but it's particularly gratifying when someone falls in love with a guitar that they thought they wouldn't like. Right. Yeah. You know, and yeah. they come out of the room shaking their head going, I can't believe I'm going to do this. Yeah, yeah. Is this guitar for sale? You yeah, know, and they yeah, yeah. and they they end up buying this guitar, yeah. which they totally never would have imagined themselves yeah. with. I think last year here at this event, yeah. we had a customer who was a session player at Muscle Shoals, right? Who lives here in Chicago area, yeah. who bought a Tao guitar from Belgium that was this Japanese inspired, really unusual. You just wouldn't piece those three things yeah. together. You wouldn't piece together Muscle Shoals, CME, yeah. and this Tao Japanese inspired yeah. guitar. And that to me is well, that's the beauty of uh, it. I love what yeah, yeah. you're doing. This is a Teufel Tesla Prodigy yeah. trim. So, Teufel being the guitar maker, Tesla being the model. Yeah. Uh, Prodigy is an indication from him to say that it's a one-off, right. not to be repeated. This is his um, charcoal color, but normally the pickups would be also in the same charcoal sort of color covering, and it would be a bird's eye maple fretboard. Right. So in this case, it has an ebony treatment, both the pickup covers and the fretboard. The back of the neck is being stained to this lovely sort yeah. of purple heart sort of color oh, yes, with the course. bird's eye maple. Um, and the tremolo, this is the first trem that he's done uh, in 10 years, and mm. the last one that he did went to Kirk Hammett, who wow. owns one of every model he has, actually. And wow. All of his guitars are very philosophical, in, in they're all answering a question, dealing with something in particular. Mm. The Tesla was dealing with the early days of electric music and mm. the archaic noises that became a part of the soundscape. Mm. Unintentional, but became kind of rock and roll anyways. Yeah, yeah. Things like unpotted pickups, you know, you'd hear right. them on live recordings, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and you'd hear people grounding out and pulling out their patch cable and you hear the yeah, 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 you know, yeah, all yeah, these yeah. things. Yeah. And that became a part of the early days. And so yeah. I really thought, you know, should a guitar player be able to sort of do that on demand? Hmm. And so if you press this in, it sounds like you're touching the end of your patch cable. Right. <laughs> This one here, you ground it out. It's kind of a bit of a kill, momentary kill switch, yeah. if you will. And this one here, they're all momentary. When you press it, 
it sounds like all of your pickups are now microphonic, like super thin and tinny. Oh, wow. And so um, it's done by embedding a small microphone in the fretboard, but it gives you the effect of that. <laughs> This is a uh, tribute by Tim Bram. Mm. Um, this has been very successful on our tours last year, yeah. this year. Uh, we've already sold multiple versions of this guitar. I think the magic of it is that it's a hybrid. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people really love the idea of playing an R-Shop guitar. They romanticize it. But if you grew up playing a flat top or an electric guitar and you pick up a, a traditional arch top, like D'Angelico, De yeah. or something sort, it's a different animal. It's drastic. It, it, it's yeah, disorienting, exactly. and you yeah. feel like, oh, I'm not a very good guitar player yeah. anymore. Like when you yeah. when you play yeah. them, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, the magic about this guitar is, if you play an acoustic guitar or an electric guitar, you you'll feel very at home immediately. Yeah. yeah. With this guitar, it just yeah. works, and it's very comfortable, and gives you enough of that arch top sort of feeling and response. Yeah. Feel like, oh, I'm getting that arch top thing, yeah. um, without taking you completely out of your comfort zone. Yeah. favorite guitars that I've played in a long time. I mean, yeah. I, obviously I'm lucky enough to play mm -hmm. a lot of guitars here at the shop and I absolutely fell in love with this. Yeah. Um, so, incredible guitar. Because it really does stand out. Yeah, really. exactly, yeah, yeah. I, I can't think of anything else that's actually on the market that's yeah. really like it. Can yeah. you? Is there... <sighs> Not off the top of my head, no. Yeah, honestly. yeah, yeah. I will tell you the piece you're holding actually I mean, is, 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 is I think a bit of sort of music and, and luthery history in the making. Yeah. This guitar is not a new guitar. It's been around already for about eight years. Mm. It's an iconic piece from Mishihiro Matsuda. Mm. And uh, all the guitar makers in the world all hold him in a different level of regard. Yeah. Uh, and, and they all know about this piece. Yeah. And he's made, I think between four to six of them. I'm not quite sure the exact number, um, but this is number one. So yeah. when everyone thinks about this guitar, this is the actual this guitar you're holding. Yeah. yeah. Although I don't know of any official plans for it to happen, I fully expect this guitar to one day live in the Smithsonian or the MoMA, yeah. somewhere really important as an yeah. iconic piece. So the fact that you can interact with this guitar that one yeah. day will I mean, likely be behind glass in a, in a private collection is, is I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm honored. It is, it, you have to kind of hold it and play it to believe what's going on here. It's, it's absolutely out of this world. This is a, uh, a G2C by uh, Brian Gallup. Brian's a special guitar maker in, in the world. Um, and this guitar is a very special project which was inspired by this organization that is trying to find a sustainable crop that your president, Jimmy Carter, actually um, brought in during, during his time. Um, and this tree grows super fast and it's been used for centuries already in Asia. It replenishes itself very quickly and 
it's incredibly light. Um, and when you cut the tree down, when you harvest the tree, you can replant the tree in the mature root system with a new seed. Oh, wow. And it takes, it grows then four to five times faster. Um, and that's that's used all over the world, that type of re right. replanting system. Okay. But normally it works like three or four times. With Polonia, I think it works maybe upwards of 10 times. Oh. So the point is, it's, it's a really renewable wood source right here. I mean, to the people who are watching this, you would not believe how light this guitar actually is. It's like if we had the AC on, it, I might, right. it might blow over there, you know? I mean, violins weigh next to nothing too, yeah. right? I mean, there are other instruments that are super light, but we're just used to building with these heavy exotic yeah. tone woods, yeah, you know, yeah, they're yeah. very, very dense and grow over a long period of time. Yeah, so light, so, so big and boomy sound, just a gorgeous sound, you know? yeah. just an incredible guitar. This is, this is Gallop again. Yeah, it's another Gallop guitar. And this guitar here is, uh, you know, spruced with Brazilian rosewood, uh, at least 50 years older. Brian has one of the greatest collections of Brazilian rosewood. Um, and actually he is, I think maybe the only luthier I'm aware of that has actually worked with the American government to certify as Brazilian rosewood, oh, okay. which means his Brazilian can be shipped internationally and no one else can. Oh wow! And so, that's huge. Uh, yeah, that's a big deal. That's huge. <laughs> the fact that you can actually have this guitar and you, so you could have somewhere else in the world yeah. move with it and travel with it. So this guitar here was made as part of a special installation for Art Basel Miami Beach Miami Art Week in 2019, yeah. where I curated a show there with nine guitar makers um, and. Gallup Studios did an installation piece uh, involving a Frank Lloyd Wright inspired uh, chair piece uh, where it has a relief in the back of the chair mm. that has glass and sandblasted glass with a pattern and the relief, the pattern of the glass and the inlay in the back of this guitar, if you turn around, all line up to be a three dimensional. Wow sort of image, which is really wonderful. Yeah. Um, the chair is really beautiful, uh, has a special feature in it as well. This guitar, a single seat, it's a very sort of a solitary moment, self-indulgent moment, if you will. Yeah. And you can reach down to the side of the chair and there's a secret compartment and you can open it up <laughs> and there's a single glass and a bottle of wine and, and even a decanter. Yeah. And so you can just <laughs> really indulge yeah, and, yeah. and enjoy your moment. And so. This piece, very special piece, along with the chair, the whole, the whole thing, um, is uh, is available now. And, yeah. Well, I guess through CME also. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so. this, this is one one of my favorite guitars that I've seen so far. I mean, just mm -hmm. the little details, just here on the fretboard. Uh, like I said, the idea that it matches up with the chair and whatnot. I mean, that's yeah, crazy, like, crazy cool. But again, all importantly, the sound. It sounds gorgeous. Right. Yeah. Do you see this, like the tour, the showcase itself evolving over time? Do you think it's just going to stay the same each year? It'll evolve. It'll evolve because the guitar evolves. Right, okay. Uh, it's bizarre sense. to me that people have this feeling like the guitar solidifies, mm -hmm. but it never has. I think the most unreasonable thing to think is that the guitar will stop evolving because there's absolutely no evidence to suggest the guitar ever stops evolving. But how, where do you see it evolving? Like, what do you. I mean, it's a difficult question, obviously, sure. but where can you see it evolving? Like, what can you see happening to them? Yeah. Remember the Les Paul, which you have a huge wall of, mm. which is a shrine yeah. because it has been canonized as one of the great saints of the guitar at this point in time, <laughs> right, yeah. was completely rejected by guitar players at the time. Yeah. It was taken into production because nobody wanted it because it was made for a market full of jazz players. Yeah. And it, jazz players didn't like it. Yeah. And it took some kids across the ocean playing some music that didn't yet exist. Yeah playing guitar that nobody wanted with pickups that overdrove amplifiers, which they didn't want at the time, yeah. through an amplifier, which was supposed to sound like a Fender, but was cheaper for British kids to buy, which didn't sound at all like a Fender. Mm. And you have a design failure of a guitar, a design failure of a pickup, a design failure of an amplifier yeah. that make the sound of rock and roll that we all love, yeah. 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 right? Yeah. We don't know, we've never known, 
The Resophonic was made for a jazz player. Mm. No one wanted it. Yeah. So it was cheap and became, poor people bought it in the Appalachian Mountains, it became bluegrass. Poor people bought it in Mississippi Delta, it became blues. Mm. Uh, we don't know. It, I mean, it's remarkable, <laughs> remarkable really, though, when, when you say it, because I mean, that's how it happened, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the future of guitar. Yeah, the unwritten future. The unwritten guitar. future. I mean, God knows where it will, yeah, yeah. Where, where it will take us. Be curious. Yeah. Exactly. Stop putting it in a box. Just pick it up, <laughs> play the damn thing, yeah. and let's see what you got. And hopefully we're all going to be inspired by something new, just like we always have been. The oh, Hawaiian yeah. guitar, Django Reinhardt, Les Paul, mm. Jimi Hendrix, on and on and on. Yeah. No one saw it coming. Yeah. And there's no reason to believe we're not going to see something. Yeah, it's, we not don't gonna know it's, gonna That's right. yeah, it's not going to stop. That's right. Yeah, it's not going to stop. So thanks again to Jamie Gale and the rest of the team at the Boutique Guitar Showcase. Now, as you've seen for yourself, some outrageous guitars, all wacky, weird, wonderful, gorgeous guitars, and it makes you think what they're going to come back with next year. I'm sure we'll find out. Uh, but until then, we'll see you next time.